We'll then have a look at the DRS125. So the timing for the DRS125 is on screen. The qualifying schedule for 11.40. The first heat around 12.55. The pre-final 10 to 3. And then the grand final for the DRS125s. Our senior class is just around about 4 o'clock. Just after 4 o'clock this afternoon. So it was Elliot Stanley who was the victor three weeks ago at Hooton Park. But several drivers who have the experience, several seeded drivers from last year, including Matthew Pierce, last year's vice champion. Tom Snape, fifth in last year's championship. Then Elliot Stanley, who was eighth last time. So just around about 30 seconds or so. before we expect to be underway. 10 minutes the drivers have to put on that fastest possible lap time. And again, it'll be interesting to see then the effect of the tyre pressures. It'll be interesting to see at what point the tyres are in that sweet spot for them to gather maximum grip before they effectively start to head towards the other way and start to make the handling a little bit more tricky for these DRS125 drivers. So the umbrellas are down. The drivers are just about ready to go. Now the other aspect of this is will every driver come out bang on the start of the session? Because some may just think, right, I'll hang on here, let it develop for a few minutes, especially if the drivers have realised that the closing stage of the session may be just putting extra wear into the tyres effectively if the tyres aren't producing the goods or only producing the goods from maybe five, six, seven laps then the drivers are probably unlikely to what's the point of being out there for 12, 14 laps when you're only actually going to be getting the maximum effect for, for a short period of that it also depends on whether the drivers are able to get the thing hooked up quickly enough but yeah, we are seeing some of the drivers, the likes of Elliot Stanley, who hasn't, and Matthew Pierce, who haven't yet decided to go on to. I think this is a clever move. I think this is a a little bit more sensible from these guys. They know the circuit is gonna isn't gonna be significantly faster. It's more to do with the tyres and more to do with. The fact that they are not going to be out there for that full session. It also gives them a chance, if they just hang on for, you know, three or four minutes even, it also gives them a chance to see what's been set out there. It also gives them a chance to see who has made those early moves. Matthew Pierce has had enough of waiting. He's going to join in the circuit now. But we've still got a couple on uh, in part firm eight that haven't yet decided to get involved in this session. So we'll keep an eye on them. We've had just around about a minute of the first session. As out comes the 3 2 1 of Firaz Bilbezi. Again, I think most are now joining the circuit. I would have maybe been brave enough to wait three or four minutes and give myself sort of six minutes, six, seven laps, which we. I would, I would guess is probably the, the optimum time for the tyres. I would still be quite happily sat there in part firm eight. Let the others set a benchmark. Let's see where they're up to. It's a brave thing to do. I absolutely understand that, but it's what car racing is all about. I'm just looking down there. There is a, at least a, a one driver still in the uh, in the part firm here. I think Elliot Stanley's still in part firm here as well. So then the early right early pace setter is Matthew Pierce. As expected the 42.6 for Pierce is his first flying lap. The best lap of the day will be significantly faster than that of course. Just seen a driver get very ragged out of the elbow. It was a 319 of Tommy Welsh. And we've got an exhaust off by the sound of it on one of them as well. So expect a technical flag to come out in the uh, in the next 
lap or so. Certainly the drivers drove past our commentary position, which is more or less bang on start finish. There was one that certainly sounded like it had some sort of exhaust uh, technical issue. Certainly louder than all the other carts out there. So Pierce comes to complete his second lap. 42-4 for Pierce. We're three minutes into the session, so when does the likes of Elliot Stanley decide that he's had enough of waiting? He's still sat in Park Fermi, I think, although we can't see him from our commentary position. I'm assuming that is the case because he's the only one who hasn't delivered a lap time as, as yet. So Oliver Owen second fastest, but second fastest by some half a second slower than Matthew Pierce. Dylan Reed a further tenth behind and Jack Rigg a 43-1 for him. Another 42. So 42-8 for Matthew Pierce last time. So he's already dropped three or four tenths of a second. Now I think this is really bright from Elliot Stanley because we'll check on Pierce next time. Now if Pierce doesn't go faster. I reckon the life cycle to get the best out of the tyres is about four laps. If that's the case, why would you continue to circulate knowing that the fourth lap was effectively your fastest and you're not going to go any quicker? Just because of the heat, just because of how the tyres work within the heat. Let's have a look at then Matthew Pierce and just see if he can go any faster, if he's got some clear air at the moment. A uh, new fastest lap for Cody Eustace. So this is lap four, so... We've got five drivers who just done their fastest lap. Here comes Pierce over start finish. No, very slow from Pierce. He must have uh, bombed that lap earlier on. And we will, of course, keep an eye on Elliot Stanley, who is just starting his first flying lap, the number eight. And just see him now into top bend as down towards the dog leg goes Pierce. Is this another flying lap or is he coming in? Let's just have a look at him as he goes round middle bend. Nope, still a flying lap for Pierce into the elbow. He comes. You can just see the car skipping over some of the bumps. Does he go any faster this time, Pierce? No, 42.7. I the tyres are done. I think four laps, certainly for these DRS. 125 drivers. Stanley's just done a 42 9, so 42 9 for him first lap. So this is important then. So we think lap three, lap four gives you your fastest lap time. Pierce did his lap best lap on lap three, 42 4. He's now circulating 42 7, three tenths slower down, having done five laps. So I reckon that Elliot Stanley's got two laps here to stick in his best qualifying time. We'll keep an eye on him. He's currently at the elbow and coming over start finish now does he go faster Stanley 43 is dead no he doesn't mm, this is interesting so did he make a little mistake we'll have a little watch of Elliot Stanley then the number 8 he's just going up to top bend now as uh, Sam Faulkner goes faster so that, right, this is interesting Faulkner waited so Faulkner waited he's just come out on his first flying lap and it's a 42 4 6 0 which is 2 Hundreds of a second quicker than Matthew Pierce. So Faulkner then goes fastest. 42-7 last time for Pierce. I don't see the point of them circulating out there anymore. I don't really don't see the point of the likes of Pierce and Reed and Cody Eustace and Jack Rigg and Oliver Owen. They've done seven laps. They ain't gonna go faster, boys, at the moment. The, the heat isn't gonna let them go any faster, I don't think. I'm happy to be proved wrong, but at the moment. Sam Faulkner is fastest. What has Elliot Stanley got? 43-1 last time round, so not fast enough at all for Elliot Stanley. He's half a second off the pace at the moment. Here comes the 3-2-1 of Firas Biblesi. Uh, 43-6 for him, which is four tenths slower than his fastest lap. So last couple of laps, nobody has gone any faster. They are literally just circulating around. Just looking to look at Tom Snape as well. Tom Snape's on a 40. 3-6 last lap no change at the front again nobody going any quicker we've still got three minutes just keep
keep an eye on Faulkner and Stanley. They've just completed their, here comes Stanley now all the start finish. He does a 59, so he's certainly ducked out of that lap at some point. Where is Faulkner? Here he is, all the start finish at 283, 59 for him as well. So another lap that he had aborted earlier on. So can I let Stanley go any quicker here? He's done four laps. I think he's probably just outside of the window now for tyres. So unless it's going to be now, I cannot see how he's going to go any quicker. I'm not really 100% sure why they're all still circling here. Because nobody's gone faster now, nobody's gone fast, faster than done a personal best for, for some time. Stanley's just done a 43 one. So they might as well all just pack up. They might as well all just, just uh, save the tyres for the heat pre final and final. Get themselves into part Fermi, get themselves out of the sun. Because nobody, with the exception of Firaz Bill Basie, who's just done a, a personal best for him, a 43 1. But the tyres are outside of the window, boys. The tyres worked for three or four laps. That was your chance. You had to be right on it from the start of the session. Track temperature hasn't changed. So now we are effectively just circling for extra practice laps, it has to be said, because there's nobody going to go, I don't think, faster than Sam Faulkner has gone. I'm not even sure if Sam Faulkner is still circulating the, uh, the 283. And if he isn't, absolute fair play to him, because for me, that's exactly what I would have done. Sam Faulkner has gone out, done three laps, done fastest lap of the qualifying session, got himself in. His tyres are now seven, eight laps fresher than everybody else's. So, I, I, really, I mean, Dave Burns has just gone out and done his second lap as well. He's qualified down in 10th at the moment. But for me, if the DRS 100 drivers are watching this, surely that's your strategy. Don't go out when the session starts. Give it a couple of minutes. Get yourself a little gap. Get yourself some space. Put a three-lap stint in. Do an amazing three laps. Put your best time in. Save your tyres and you come. I'm, I'm not Just because of the heat, because of the way that the, the heat is going to affect the tyres and affect the circuit, I don't see any advantage at all and I think Sam Faulkner has got this absolutely bob on. Because not only is he the fastest man on the circuit, not only has he put the best lap of the session in, he's also only put three laps on his tyres. So let's see how the... Uh, let's see how the rest look at that. I mean, Elliot Stanley's tried to do something similar. He only did six laps on his. Dave Burns did two laps on his. But for me, this is a three-lap qualifying session. It might be ten minutes but effectively it is three laps for these guys because that's the window for the tyres. So Sam Faulkner then, fastest lap in the DRS125 qualifying a 42.460 for Sam. Matthew Pierce second fastest, he did nine laps, 42.479. Dylan Reed third fastest, 317, a 42.902. He was some four tenths slower. So not much between Faulkner and Pierce, it has to be said. But Dylan Reed and the remaining pack, some four tenths to half a second behind Sam Faulkner. Elliot Stanley in fourth, the race winner from round one at Hooton Park. 42.943 for him. And then Cody Eustace, fifth fastest. Jack Riggs, sixth fastest. Oliver Owen, seventh fastest. Firaz Bilbezi was eighth fastest. Ben Gartz had nine. Dave Burns, who only did two laps of the session. The 197, he was 10th fastest, Carl Watt, Tommy Welsh and Tom Snape were the remaining drivers as they head down into Park Fermi. All the carts and engines will be checked, of course. Every driver is weighed after every session, or the, certainly the top drivers are weighed after every session as well, just to make sure there are no irregularities from a scrutineering perspective. Second fastest... Uh, this morning qualifying, not an awful lot of time to uh, to, to make up either. No, it's, it's super tight. So, you know, there's nothing in it between me and Sam, and to be honest with you, there's nothing in it sort of rearward as well. So it's going to be tight. It always is round here. It's such a fast flowing circuit. Mm. If they all stay behind each other, it, you should see a train. So um, it's going to be interesting. I was interested to see the amount of 
people did in qualifying and the strategy and uh, you know interesting for me to try and understand i suppose what people's thoughts were it looked to me like the tire window was probably three or four laps is that how you saw it as well yeah well i got my fastest lap on lap two so um but it, it, it so yesterday gave us a bit of a full sense of security because we were doing our fastest laps to come sort of 15 so it, going into qualifying we thought we'd have to probably do the whole session and um they did dip back down again but no, it was all game over after the second lap. So same with pretty much all of us. And, and is that a, a setup change now? I mean, I suppose it doesn't really matter when you do your fastest lap as long as the tyres have longevity to get you to the, you know, a, a pace through the distance. Is, has there been changes or are you just thinking, you know, the drop off isn't that big? Um, I think, well, the drop off isn't that big. I, I did manage to get into sort of the 42s again after my fastest lap. Um, it's just how much that drop off is. So this is the first real test of uh, the tyre endurance. But um yeah, we'll, we'll see. I think I think we shouldn't drop off too far. Um, fingers crossed, because if it does, then it will cause us problems for drivers around. So, and in terms of the obviously you've got uh, you've got to do a, a ten minute session here. You've got a ten minute pre uh, pre final and a, and a longer grand final. Mm. How, how much are you expecting that drop off to be? How especially with this heat, it's it's almost unprecedented in this country for us to have this yeah. sort of heat for <laughs> a, a long time. It is, and um, I always think that it, I always thought that it gave a. It's almost you prefer the wet sometimes because at least you know a little bit more about the wet than you do yeah, th this yeah. heat. So how much do you see that change being when you come to sort of the last five laps of, of the grand final? I actually think it probably, it's funny enough, it actually starts to grip up quite a lot towards the end. And um, almost every single corner becomes sort of flat out because you almost get too much grip. Um, but it depends on how much that levels out before the end. So... That session that we did in the qualifying, the good thing that it did tell us is we did almost 10 laps. Those last few laps, even though they were slower, they were consistent. So um, we'll probably see the last few laps of the final, everyone going much, much slower, but still tight, like I say. But um, yeah, it's warm, to say the least. It's <laughs> like driving around in a swimming pool. But. Uh, well, that's, that's the other thing as well, isn't it? That it's not just about the tyre drop off and all that sort of thing. It's about drivers, isn't it? It's about how drivers manage the the heat and the fluid intake and all that sort yeah. of thing. I remember when you know my, when I was racing in Europe, it, it, it's very much about looking after yourself as much as it is looking after the tyres. Yeah, absolutely. You've got to take off so much fluid. I've, I've probably never drank so much water in my life. Yeah. So, um, but, you yeah, know, it's, it's a hot one. But it's, like I say, same for everyone. Just got to try and keep as cool as possible. Hence the uh, pit girl. Yeah, very good. <laughs> and a lovely pit girl we have here as well. All the best Cheers. for the uh, for the first heat. Interesting, really interesting stuff there in terms of how the drivers have to manage not just the tyres and, and the setup, but themselves as well. Nice to get a, an indication of where we think the drop-off is going to be on these tyres and I suppose ultimately for the people that are watching at home a good indication of how kart racing is really an equivalent to Formula 1 in terms of some of the things that these drivers have to consider so they're certainly considering the the tyre wear they're considering the drop off that's going to happen as the uh, as the weekend goes on and, and, and the different types of, of circuit and the different types of how abrasive it is for example so yeah some really interesting stuff from Matthew there I'm just going to try and see who else we can find um, to have a chat with on the grid in fact if we can we'll nip right to the we'll go right around the outside and to the back of the grid and just have a, a chat with Tom Snape, the number five, if we can navigate our way through here. <laughs> Certainly not the uh, the qualifying session that Tom would have wanted and we don't usually see him at the, at the back of the grid, so I'm just intrigued to, to get his view as well. We'll see if we can nip under his brolly and get a little bit of shade as well. Tom, can we just grab you for a second, if that's okay? Tom, not somewhere we'd associate you being at the, at the back of the field. What was the problem in qualifying? Engine problems. Um, we've been suffering with engine problems all, all weekend so far. Um, but we, we've got one from Andy now, so we're, hopefully we should be back on the pace. And we were just talking about sort of how abrasive the circuit is here and, and the tyre wear and there will be a drop off in tyres. Obviously, some drivers had a, a shorter qualifying session, didn't put as many laps on the tyres. Obviously, I suppose with engine problems, you're still trying to get as much as you can out of it. So you need to stay out there a bit longer. I actually came in early because I wanted to save the tyres. Um, I thought I'm not I'm not going to put a quick time in here, so I'm just going to come in. I think I must have done about six laps, um, purely just to save the tyres really for the rest of the day. So I should have that edge. And a different task for you then. So you've got to you've got to overtake some carts first and yeah. foremost, haven't you? You've got to try and navigate your way up there and get yourself the the best possible I suppose spot for the final. Is it just a case of accumulate as many points as you can, overtake as many as you can, and see where you are in in, in this afternoon's race? Yeah, that's the plan. Yeah, overtake as many as possible. All the best. Nice one, thanks. So yeah, interesting stuff. We will uh, interesting to see how different drivers tackle qualifying in different ways. We'll certainly grab uh, a chat with the likes of Sam Faulkner later on uh, before one of the uh, the pre-finals. But yeah, uh, a good grid of 
the RS125 drivers. These are senior drivers, of course, and interesting to see how their brains work and their minds work in terms of the strategy that's going to be needed here based on the, on the heat and the different ways that they, uh, they will have to manage that. We'll be back in just a few moments where we will see the first heat for the DRS125s. <laughs> talking about how yesterday had almost lulled them into a false sense of security with the tyres because they tested yesterday and were doing longer runs, longer runs of some 15 laps and getting their fastest lap towards lap 15. But circuits change and overnight and the temperature has changed as well. And all of a sudden now when they went out in qualifying, they were seeing that their fastest lap was coming on lap two, lap two or three when the the tyres were in the sweet spot, so really interesting stuff. I, I would imagine there will be a drop off here in lap times. That isn't going to affect how close the race is, though, because I imagine once one can't drop off, the rest are going to drop off as well. So they'll still be fairly evenly matched. These first couple of laps could be really racy, couldn't they? Because they've all got tyres that are going to respond and react for them. We have got drivers who've got tyres that have done different life spans, life cycles. They're fairly well formed here as well. We'll Faulkner get them away first time. They look pretty good. They are pretty good. Faulkner goes into the lead then. Pierce is tucked in behind them. They're all through the paddock corner. They're all heading now down into the loop for the first time. No change in the first couple of places. There's an overtaking manoeuvre a little bit further back, I think involving Jack Rigg and Oliver Owen. Here are the leaders then, so Sam Faulkner. So there's nothing between the front three in terms of lap times as they head down to the dog leg for the first time. Faulkner it is then who leads. Pierce in second place, last year's number two, last year's second place driver in the DRS 125 series. Into the elbow for the first time. They'll stretch the legs through this flat out right hander and all the start finish they stream through. Faulkner, Pierce, Stanley, then Jack Rigg, Cody Eustace and Dylan Reed. First lap movers, Carl Watt is up three places into seventh and Jack Rigg made two places up into fourth place. And Stanley made a place from fourth to third as well. The driver lost out the most with Dylan Reed. So Dylan Reed went from third to sixth in the space of just around a lap or so of this Risington circuit. A little battle going on throughout as well. That was the 3-2-1 of Firas Bill Basie down in 12th place at the moment. Tommy Walsh is the rookie behind them. Over start finish they come then. Remember this first heat for the DRS just eight minutes plus a lap. Their grand final later on this afternoon is 12 minutes plus a lap. It'd be really interesting, wouldn't it, to know how much water they will lose. Don't underestimate how much of a physical battle this will be for the drivers today. And it'll be tough out there. I think he described it as driving in a swimming pool. Matthew Pierce, it's a fairly decent analogy, it has to be said. So here are the leaders once more. All the start finish with no change at the front. I wonder if Matthew Pierce is just weighing this up here. He knows there's not an awful lot between himself and our race leader, Sam Faulkner. He knows that the times were pretty comparable between the two of them. And he's just tracking the back of race leader at the moment. And a little bit further back is Cody Eustace, 
fifth place. Dylan Reed is sixth and Dave Burns is seventh. Tom Snape is now up one into ninth. Oliver Owen up into tenth. So Faulkner is who leads. He's also done the fastest lap of the race so far, 43.085. battling behind as well so that battle including the likes of the number eight of Stanley in fact just looking at the gap now between Faulkner and Pierce Faulkner's just, just gone a little bit quicker hasn't he just took another tenth or so he's given himself a little gap there's a great battle in behind them as well including Stanley Rigg, Eustace, Reed, Burns at the moment third place of Elliot Stanley and the 317 of Dylan Reed. Well, there's the replay of having to go around the outside was the 318 of Oliver Owen, and then a little bit sideways. Goes the 314 of Corey Eustace, manages to just, just about collect it all back together and has settled back down into eighth place. Tom Snow poked into seventh. Dylan Reed now recovers. He had a fairly rough start, he's recovered back up into fourth. Over start finish they go once more. So the gap now between Faulkner and Pierce is half a second. They've done fairly it's taken almost a tenth of a second every time, hasn't it? So we've got a finish as well. 316 Jack Briggs. So that incident we saw earlier on. We met by a penalty board. Now. What a penalty would be. And we'll see when they come in at the end of the race. So the number eight of Elliot Stanley leads this battle for third. He's got very close company now from Dylan Reed. Now Reed was quick, wasn't he? He was quick in qualifying earlier on this morning. And now they swing over, start finish. Will they have a look into turn one? No, he won't. He sticks in behind and they go through the right hander into the loop and pop back out up towards top bend. He just lost a little cart length or so, hasn't he? He's under a little bit of pressure himself from. Jack Rigg in fifth, Snow back up to sixth. Dave Burns has managed to climb up into seventh place as well. Ben outside Cody Eustace and Phil as Bill Daisy. So this battle then for third. So race leaders then, gap is up another tenth. So what Fulton has done really well here is he's just been super consistent, he's just put a tenth of a second on every single lap. He, he's lapping around about a tenth or two tenths slower than his fastest time of the day so far. But every lap he's just taken a tenth of a second out of Matthew Pierce. And this is, it's a heartbreaking for Pierce because you'll just see him starting to slip away at a tenth of a second a lap. Now Dylan Reed, who is the only one who was really comparable with these two in the qualifying, is still stuck in behind Elliot Stanley in fourth place, he's right there with him, but hasn't managed to find a way past as yet. As the leaders come over, start finish to begin one more lap. We've had seven minutes, remember it's eight minutes plus a lap in this heat. There's the 197 of Dave Burns raises his arm, I think Burns lost a few places there at the end of that lap, and here comes the move then for third place. Well, there was a hand wave, but I'm not sure there was an awful lot of contact. I think it was a more opportunistic from Dylan Reed. He wasn't fully alongside, but what Stanley did was gave him quite a lot of room and allowed him to open that gap a little bit. Stanley goes wide again, there was a contact there between Elliot Stanley and Jack Rigg or Tom Snape as the three of them go down into... Stanley's going backwards at the moment, isn't he? He's uh, really struggling to 
keep the chasing pack behind him. And in one foul swoop, Elliot Stanley has gone from third all the way back down the field into seventh place. So that just shows you how close these races can be. The Faulkner and Pierce, the gap between them seven tenths of a second. And looking fairly comfortable, it has to be said, for our race leader at the moment. The gap is some, well, it's seven tenths of a second, three quarters of a second. It's about five, six cart lengths between the two of them. And Sam Faulkner is heading up towards start finish to start what should be. Should it be his final lap? It should be. There wasn't a ball because the start officials haven't put out a contact warning for the 314 of Cody Eustis. So Cody Eustis has had an entertaining afternoon so far, hasn't he? Involved in a few skirmishes down there. So Faulkner is then to start the last couple of corners of the last lap. He's got bottom bend and the middle bend to do. He's got to get through the elbow, which is just where he's approaching now. He has this then long right-handed kick, which sends him on to the start finish straight. And Sam Faulkner will win the first heat. Behind him, Matthew Pierce, only just around eight tenths of a second between them in the end. Dylan Reed comes home in third place. This battle for third, fourth, fifth and sixth. Strung out towards the end, Jack Rigg in fourth, Tom Snape in fifth, and Ben Gartside is sixth. Elliot Stanley finishes in eighth place, and Cody Eustace comes home just behind him. Dave Burns recovered into tenth with Firaz Bill Basie in ninth place. And that was the first heat for the DRS 125s, won by Sam Faulkner. Carts will stream into Park Fermi. For their post-race checks and the drivers, and we'll hopefully get down and speak to some of the DRS 100 drivers as they are next on circuit. Their first heat scheduled for just around 20 past one. We're down on the grid here for the DRS 125s, their pre-final. We've just seen the DRS 62. So two races left for these guys. These are our older uh, of the drivers. We're going to try and have a, a chat with a couple of them if we possibly can. I want to try and get hold, if I can, of Elliot Stanley. So we'll head this way and see if we can grab a hold of him. He's just having a, a moment under his umbrella here. Uh, oh. Oops, Nick, a bit of his shade is, is the order of the day. Right, Elliot, so I um, had a bit of time to find him from qualifying. Uh, half a second or so um, slower than the leaders. Obviously, from Hooton Park's performance, we, we were probably expecting a little bit closer to the front. Have you found some of that time yet? Uh, we're not sure. Um, we've been having problems all day with the carburetor, so we've changed it now. Hopefully, fingers crossed, it does the job. So you, you, your job now is a little bit different. You've got some cars to get past. You've got to try and navigate your way through, through a few. Is this a case of pick as many of these off as we can to get you as close to the front as you can for the grand final? Yeah, try and get up behind Matt and Sam and try and put them under a bit of pressure, even Dylan, just trying to get there. I know it's going to be difficult, especially at this track. It's hard to overtake, but hopefully it'll come. 
Yeah, and we've just we've just been looking at the. There's a bit of a headwind now as well as drivers are coming up towards the the first corner here. The first corner for me has probably been the the best opportunity for a lot of drivers to get past, getting a good tour out of the the elbow and round the corner there. Other than that, you're right. It, it, it's all medium pace corners, isn't it? So there's not that many great overtaking opportunities. No, it isn't. And even this first corner, unless you're a lot quicker than that person in front of you, you're not getting past. So you kind of have to follow and try and pick your points. So. Hopefully, it's a good race for me yep. going forward. And, uh, yeah, we'll see for the final. All the best. Cheers. So, Elliot, Elliot Stanley there, who starts on, the, starts on the inside of row four. So he's got a little bit of work to do, it has to be said. We're going to try and grab a chat with uh, Sam Faulkner, if we possibly can. I'm trying to see where he is. His car is just on the grid now, so we'll give him a, a couple of minutes to, to get ready. We've got plenty of time before the, the, uh, the this race is due to go off, just in around five minutes time or so. You can see, as we've said all day, drivers all utilising as much of the uh, sunshade as they possibly can do. It is hot here. We're still well over 30, 31 degrees, which, as we said to uh, to Matthew Pierce earlier on, is a different it's a different scenario for drivers. Drivers in the UK are generally used to, you know, fairly tepid conditions, even more used to the wet weather in kart racing. And this does become a little bit alien. It does have different characteristics. There's things that you need to do differently, not just from a setup perspective, not just from a you know, you know, trying to ensure that the cart's in its best possible condition, but also physically for drivers. This is tough out there, especially as the races get longer today, as they will do throughout the weekend. You'll find that the drivers will start to, to suffer as well. So, as we said earlier, well hydrated drivers, and um, and they will be very tired when they come off as well. Let's just head towards the, the front of the grid and see if we can... Have a, in fact, what we will do is we'll just ho have a quick chat with, with Tom Snape because he did such a good job from the from the back of the field, and uh, and I would imagine he'll be really satisfied with the the outcome of that. Tom, just grab you for a, a second. We spoke earlier about what a tough job you had, and you just found yourself on the uh, on the outside of the second row. Yeah, I'm very surprised to be honest. I didn't think I'd do quite that well, but I'll take it. <laughs> so, so what's the job now? Is the job is the job to to get two or three more and try and hit the front, or you know consolidate where you are? And I suppose any anything higher than this position is a bonus based on your way before. I think I'd be happy if I can keep up with the quick guys and obviously make a few stabs if I can, but yeah. All the best for the race. So a really good uh, first heat for him. We're going to try and grab uh, Sam Faulkner if we possibly can. He's not quite helmeted up yet. He's going to probably do that process now. We're just heading to the front of the field. We'll try and grab a quick word just as he puts his, his helmet on. Uh, the the poor man. I'm really interested to hear about his, his qualifying session because his qualifying session was exactly how I would have done it in terms of a three lap shootout, bish bash bosh, and, and get it done. Sam, talk to us about qualifying first. It was um, it was exactly how I saw it in terms of everybody else was going out there and doing a lot of work on the tyres, and you just got out there, did the job, and, did the job, and that was it. Yeah, the tyres really, I think, only have two or three laps in them for the optimum, and then they just go off. So we had to go out and do it quickly, and then after that, there's no point going around and taking more life out of them. So I think both me and Matt only did three or four laps, and that was it. Is that the case of the race as well? In terms of you, you did a lot of your hard work at the start of the heat, you, you got yourself a, maybe a, a two or three cart length advantage and just chipped away a, a tenth a lap. Is that is that the strategy? Obviously, the tyres will go off. It'll go off for everybody. So if you've done that work early, is that the advantage? I think so, yeah. The tyres seem to be quite stable. They're quick at the start, and they go off a bit, but they're quite stable for the rest of the race. But yeah, it's so hard to have a tight round here, but yeah, the race will be pretty stable, I think. If you can get a gap at the start, it's quite hard to put it back in because yeah. it's, it's just corner after corner and they're so flat that there's not a lot you can do to catch people, really. Absolutely. All the best for the race, Sam. And interesting though, that some of the drivers, certainly the, the faster formula, the, the DRS 125, it's a very flowing track here. It bounces from one corner to the next. They're all fairly mid-range. There's only one real stopping point, which is over at the... Um, over at the, the the horseshoe at the bottom end there, so the dog leg rather. So so yeah, interesting uh, interesting to see the driver's perspective of that. And this could be a race which is decided in the first couple of laps. So expect the the drivers to try and make their moves early, and we'll see how they get on. The DRS 125s are just about to start their pre-final.
the engines are on and drivers have started their formation lap. It's our second of the pre-finals. Eight minutes plus a lap for the DRS 125s. Led out by the heat winner, Sam Faulkner. Like he said, didn't see the need to do more or to do too much on the tyres in qualifying. I reckon his tyres are about four or five, maybe even six laps fresher than Matthew Pierce's were. Matthew Pierce did nine or ten laps in the in the qualifying session and had spoke to us earlier about the reason for doing that. They've been caught out by some of the results of testing yesterday. So I wonder if in Matthew Pierce's head. Getting the jump on Sam Faulkner at the start of this race is the most successful opportunity or the strategy, if you like. Can he find a way past him? Just keep Sam Faulkner behind him. I reckon Faulkner's about a tenth of a lap quicker around this Risington circuit based on the heat result this morning. So track position could be key. You let Faulkner get ahead, he could be in the distance. So Faulkner and Pierce on the front row, Dylan Reed and, and Tom Snape, who made loads of places in the first heat. Ben Gartside and Jack Rigg are behind them. Elliot Stanley and Cody Eustace. That's the top eight. Will we go first time? We will. Faulkner's got a good one, has he? Pierce to go around the outside. Is Pierce going to be able to squeeze his way through? Don't think he is. He sits down into second place as they stream through towards the loop for the first time. All just about get through. It is Sam Faulkner. He just fended off the advances. He certainly had a go, didn't he? Matthew Pierce. He gave him a good squeeze as they went through the... First corner for the first time. He didn't manage to get through. We've got contact as well there. So a couple of drivers involved in that skirmish. And one of them was the number eight of Elliot Stanley. So Elliot Stanley we spoke to before the race. Looking to make onward progress. Oh, big curb clip by Pierce. Will have cost him a cart length or so. Little bit of mistake in the early stages from Pierce, who will be trying very, very hard to make sure he is still on terms with the race leader he's got Snape in behind him what a story this would be if Tom Snape could find a way to get on terms with not just Pierce but Sam Faulkner as well right from the back of the field after those engine problems earlier on today here are the leaders then Faulkner neat and tidy through the left hander at the dog leg down towards the two bottom and, mid and middle bends gap is what a, t a cart length, a tenth maybe. Pierce a little bit tidier this time through the right hander and onto the start finish straight. So, no change at the front then. Faulkner, Pierce, Snape, Rig, Reed. And Gartside, Cody Eustace, and Carl Watt. Tommy Walsh is the rookie up in eighth place. He's closer, isn't he? Matthew Pierce this time, it's as close as he's been, he's tucked right up on the bumper, he was really good under brakes through the bottom corner. And now they stream back up the hill towards the left of the elbow. Then over to the left hand side to get the best possible line, try and straight line that final turn and head over the, over the start finish. I wonder if they made some changes, Matthew Pierce, and the camp in there because he is certainly much closer to Sam Faulkner than he was the first time in the first heat. And it's this point here that he really starts to close as they go down towards the left-hander. Faulkner kicks out the, the back end and then with a little bit of adjustment gets it back on the straight line that it needs to be on. Under investigation comes Elliot Stanley the 8. We saw him involved in that incident earlier on as well. Pierce then great under breaks with the elbow. Will he lose a little bit of momentum on the way out? A little bit, but not an awful lot. He was very good under breaks, wasn't he? Matthew Pierce both into the elbow and into the dog leg on the last couple of laps. He's just about there, just not quite in striking distance. You see now, under braking, just kicks the back end out, a little bit of opposite lock, and then turns into the corner. Back end slides a little bit as those tyres start to effectively melt in the heat through the right hander again they're all right there not just Matthew Pierce look at Tom Snape as well he's absolutely within striking distance of Matthew Pierce and Sam Faulkner first and second 
Further back from them is Jack Rigg. Still doing a good job there in fourth place. And the leaders head over, start, finish once more. Into the top straight and then down to the loop. They come up to the right hander. And then down this, this is a, I suppose the longest straight they have over the start finish straight. Everything at round Risington is, is on a corner, in the long corners. And again, he's right there, isn't he, Pierce, as they go through the dog leg. Head out, so good under braking. What he does do is he loses a little bit of time because he's that good under the brake, under brakes. He closes right in under brake and then loses maybe a cart length or so on the way out because he's done so much work on the way in. It, karting is a game of momentum. It's a sport where sometimes the slower you are in, the better you're lining, the quicker you get on the throttle, the faster you are out. And that is vice versa as well. You brake later, kart has to do more work in a shorter space. You're generally slower out of the corner. That's how the mechanics and the physics of it work. Down towards the dog leg once more. Faulkner again. Great under brakes, but then see, you can just see there, loses two or three cart lengths on the way out. And Faulkner got a really good exit that time out of the dog leg and has got himself you know, three cart lengths advantage now as again, Pierce good under braking as they go into the elbow. Over start finish then. Faulkner doing a good job under some pressure here. Faulkner, Pierce, Snape, then Rig, Reed, Garside, Eustace, Watt. Oliver Owen is ninth, Elliot Stanley is recovering. He's in 10th at the moment with Dave Burns, Firas, Bill Basey and Tommy Welsh are the rest of the 13 runners we have here for the DRS 125s. We've got one more pre-final to come, the pre-final for the DRS 100s and then we'll do it all again for the main finals. 10, lap, 10 minutes for the DRS 62s and 12 minutes for the 125s and the 100s. Here is our race leader. We've completed nearly six minutes of this race so far. We've got three minutes to go, plus that one final lap. And Pierce is gonna have to do a little bit more to get himself on terms. He's, he's close, but not quite there. As the concertina up into the dog leg, the heaviest breaking point on the circuit. And then they'll stretch their legs down towards the, the bottom and the middle bend, and then up now towards a flick and a little break into the elbow. Where is he now, Pierce? Where was he a lap ago? So the gap was three tenths a lap ago. It's still three tenths now, so no real change there in the distance between the front view. Pierce then still in second place. Through the left-hander they come with the dog leg once more. He'll probably get two more laps after this one to try and get himself on terms with the race. He's been there or thereabouts, hasn't he? It's certainly a a closer contest than the first heat was. But you do get the impression that Pierce is absolutely on the ragged edge trying to stay with Sam Faulkner. And Faulkner has probably got a little bit in reserve. It's a new personal best for Matthew Pierce, a 43.155. And still, the gap remains around about two cart lengths. This is where he's quick. The way into the dog leg, he will close into touching distance. And then it just seems like Faulkner stretches away on the exit, exactly the same that time. And will it be the last lap this time around? This will be really tight as to whether they get, they're probably going to get round in time. They've got 10 seconds and they're already out of the elbow. So it'll be two to go this time for Faulkner. Faulkner and Pierce and Snape and Rig and Reed. Reed, who's got a little bit of an advantage over Ben Garside. Cody uses is behind them. Cal Watt has just gone through to break the time and being once more. There's not a huge distance between them all, really. They're all within the first half of the, the circuit. But the important distance is between Sam Faulkner and Matthew Pierce, and that distance is about three tenths of a second at the moment as they head down towards the bottom bend. 
He's going to have a last lap this time. So if Pierce has got anything in reserve, he needs to see it now. Similarly, Tom Snape, if he's got aspirations of getting past Matthew Pierce, that probably needs to be now as well. So over start, finish the goal into the paddock corner. No change in the remaining places of this DRS 125 pre final. A little bit wide from Tom Snape through the left hander at the loop. It looks like Fulton has done enough, doesn't it? He's got enough of a gap. It's two or three car lengths of comfort. He probably won't feel very comfortable, but it is comfort for him at the moment. He's got two more corners to navigate. He comes round the bottom bend. He'll come back up the hill towards the left-hander at the elbow for the final time. The gap's bigger than it has been throughout, really. So a good marker from Sam Faulkner goes on to win the second race of the day for the DRS 125s, the pre-final. He'll start the final on pole position. Matthew Pierce, second, Tom Snape. Another excellent result for him. Up in third, Jack Rigg finishes fourth, Dylan Reed is in fifth, Ben Gartside comes home in sixth place. Cody Eustace, Carl Watt, Oliver Owen and Elliot Stanley all unchanged. The top ten didn't really change, did they, for the last five or six laps there? But it was Sam Faulkner, the 283, who had done enough to head off the advances of Matthew Pearce and Tom Snape. That is the provisional result of the DRS 125 pre-final. And we've got just around about 15 minutes before our last pre-final of the day, before we start all the grand finals. And that is for the DRS 100. It's due on circuit around about quarter past three. We're here on the grid for the DRS 125s for their grand final, their main final of the day. Two races left for us here this weekend at Little Risington. The sun's been out. It's been some exceptional racing as well. We've got just six or seven minutes before we start this uh, this grand final. So we will grab a couple of, of drivers in a few moments. Just worth noting that they're not all here yet. So that some of them are cutting it very fine, it has to be said, because the, the gate opened quite a while ago. So some of these drivers just sauntering in ready for this uh, for this grand final so but we have got six or seven minutes left and different drivers do different things at different times some will prefer to be here and concentrated and, and looking out towards the gate and towards the start of the race others will be quite relaxed and chilled about it and will sort of turn up when they like and as long as they're within the the regulatory time that they need to be here then they'll be absolutely fine so yeah very uh, some different approaches for it, I wanted to try and grab a chat with uh, with Matthew Pierce because I'm just intrigued about the strategy of this race and how he has to maybe do something a, a little bit differently to what he's done before. We'll wait for him to get his helmet on. Um, wait for him to get his helmet on first. We're just seeing now Sam Faulkner has arrived onto the grid, so he's one of the last to arrive. He, he'll put the car onto pole position. So remember, he was. He's won both of the races so far. He didn't quite win the the, the pre-final by as much of a distance as he did the uh, the heat earlier on today the other driver that came into contention was was dylan reed and we'll try and grab a, a chat with dylan at some point as well inside of, of the second row is jack rig now jack was particularly impressive in the in the pre-final as well the, the 316 you can see they've got the umbrella on the uh, on the car just to give him as as much shelter as they possibly can do. I'm just waiting for some of these drivers to either put a mask on or to uh, to put their helmet on so we can make sure that we are um, 
compliant with what we need to be compliant at. What, the, what I would say is that the Daniel Ricardo series and, and Andy Cox and the organisers here have been fantastic at ensuring that we are uh, all keeping to within the government regulations, of course. We want to be here, we want to be racing, we want to be seeing the uh, the action unfold. So to do that, we need to make sure that we we are keeping to everything that they should be doing. We've got the, uh, the Clark course. This is quite interesting. Uh, just have a look over here because the, um, the clerk of the course is asking to see all the drivers. So um, it's probably worth me just... Uh, it's probably just worth me keeping quiet here and just seeing if we can uh, gather a little bit of the information. So far today, I've retrieved some tools. Of the car. Let's see what we've got. I've retrieved the tyre pressure gauge. Oh, off the track, it's come off the car. But the last thing I've just retrieved was an ice pack. Oh, interesting. So, so uh, uh, the clerk of the course is talking sure to the drivers about loose impediments on carts. He's actually says he's had to pick up a, a tyre pressure gauge today. He's had to pick up a, I think there was a mobile phone that had come loose at um, uh, Hooton Park a couple of weeks ago. So the clerk of the course is just reminding the drivers that they shouldn't have any loose impediments with them. The last one, he was saying that the last thing that he retrieved was, I just try and, I just try and, I just try and grab him now while he's here and he can explain that to us himself because I'm sure I just heard you say that you had to retrieve an ice pack. Yes, I've just been handed uh, from the, one of the marshals here <laughs> at Risington an ice pack that has come from one of the cadets' persons. I'm not quite sure where it was attached, Mark. The fact that it wasn't attached very, very well has made me think, maybe we need to start say to these guys please if you're thinking of that can we just attach them a little bit better and it is actually that hot here it is that hot that the drivers are going to the extreme of having to uh to have some ice packs let's just get over here and speak to matthew pierce because I've, I've only got one question for him really it's about strategy um be because of the way the, the first two races have un unfolded i've just got one question matthew based on 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 strategy <laughs> is the best chance for you now track position because you've obviously spent a couple of races behind him i'm not asking you to give things away to us but uh, is the likelihood now that you, your best opportunity right now is to get track position and go from there? Uh, yeah, I mean, this this track, first corner, you know, I'm on the outside, so I tried to do something in the pre-final, but it was going to end in tears, so I had to back out of it. But I know where he's gaining on me, so I'm trying to focus on that area of the track. To, so uh, we've, we've tried a few things. Hopefully we've done what we need to do to maximise that sort of, you know, delta, if you like. So... Because um, the gap had come down, hadn't it? The gap had certainly come down yeah. in, the, in the pre final to where it was in the, uh, in, the, in the first heat. Yeah, we've, well, we've actually tweaked it again since the heat, so we're getting ever so close. But, um, but hopefully, the last little tweak we've done is enough just to get him on the bumper and at least have a chance overtaking. Otherwise, it becomes very uh, tedious. Thank you very much. Interesting stuff. I mean, it, for me personally, it would be about track position, I think. The strategy for me would certainly be make sure you get the jump on the start. I think that, that's probably, based on what we've seen so far, that's Matthew Pierce's best opportunity. Get his nose in front of Sam Faulkner, make Sam Faulkner think about something different. At the moment, Sam Faulkner's had it fairly straightforward. He's made a good start himself. He's got out front and he's managed to, to, to just effectively drive away. If he's got to see the back of something, that might make him do different things. And kart racing's a funny thing. Strategy's a, an interesting play, and, and, and that would certainly be my my look at this first corner. We'll uh, we'll see how it develops. I'm just going to jump on the second row as well and speak to Dylan Reed because Dylan Reed's had a, a bit of a mixed weekend, it has to be said. He, uh, he was fairly quick in the qualifying. I think he was third fastest in qualifying earlier on today. I'm just going to try and grab him just for a moment here, if we possibly can. Dylan, a bit of a bit of a mixed bag, it has to be said. A bit of a recovery drive in, in the last race as well. You find yourself on the inside of the second row. What can you do from here? Um, hopefully, I've just got to stay on the back of Sam through the first corner, not lose any places and um, work my way through from there, hopefully. We've just been talking about how important track position could be here in terms of if you can get the jump past Sam in the early stages and make him do something different that he hasn't had to do so far this weekend, that could, could result in something different. Uh, yeah, I mean, the temperature's ridiculous here. It's really hot, so I think everyone's going to be feeling it by the end of the race. So as long as I keep the pressure on, whether I'm in front or behind, um, we'll see how it, how it ends. Excellent stuff and all the best for the race as well. So interesting to see how drivers, what drivers' mindset is at the start of this race. It, again, th they've probably got to make Sam Faulkner do something different. He's, he's had it too easy in the first two races, although the times have come down between himself and the likes of Matt Pearce and, uh, and the drivers in behind. At the moment, he's still facing the clean air, and I think until they get Sam Faulkner under a little bit more pressure and make him come back to them and make him have to attack them, I think um, that would be the ploy to, to try and stop him making it a clean sweep this weekend. 
Can he do it? We will see in just a few moments time. We are a minute away from the start of the grand final for the DRS 125s. DRS 125s is underway. They'll have two of those just to ensure they've got the maximum amount of, well, I was going to say heat into the tyres. I don't think they need any more heat in the tyres this weekend. It's been ferociously hot here. It was just a a short rest fight just then on the grid for the DRS 125s when the sun managed to find one of the very few clouds in the sky to hide behind. But other than that, it has been very, very hot indeed. 31 degrees at five past four here in the Cotswolds. And for those drivers, the temperature in, inside those race suits, inside those helmets, inside those carts, full of those components that are very, very hot will exceed well, probably double that temperature. Here we go then. Can Faulkner get the jump? It looks as if he has, or has Pierce got the jump? Tries to go around the outside, can't make it stick. Oh, there's contact between the two of them. Just a slight touch, I think, between Faulkner and Pierce. Faulkner manages to hold off the advances of Matthew Pierce. Can Pierce find a way? Now, Faulkner, in his mind now, will just be about scampering away at the front of this field. He'll just be about smooth, consistent. Hit your apexes, hit your breaking points. Keep Matthew Pierce behind. Can I extend my advantage? What we saw last time was Matthew Pierce so good under brakes, but did seem to lose a little bit on the way out of the corners. I think he needs track position. I think he needs to do it now in the next lap or two. Whilst he's close enough, I think he probably needs to force an opening. He just caught the curb, Matthew Pierce, on the inside of the elbow. We've seen a few drivers do that. We're still only a Cartland Thor so between Sam Faulkner and Matthew Pierce. Here they go through. Here's the contact. It was involving the number eight in the wars, hasn't he? The number eight of Elliot Stanley, the race winner from Hooton Park. He's not going to win this race today. He's currently at the back of the field. Here are the front two then. We've completed just a lap and a half. It's 12 minutes plus that one final lap this race. So a long, long way around this Risington circuit. Over, start, finish, they come. Gap between Faulkner and Pierce is just around about two tenths of a second. It's two and a half cart lengths, isn't it? As they go through the loop once more. Just fear that if he doesn't get a little bit of track position, Matthew Pierce, what we've seen is as these races have gone on, Faulkner has just started to Stretched his, stretched his legs. Is it worth a little risk? Is it worth a little lunge, a little dive somewhere for Matthew Pierce? It's certainly what I'd be thinking at this point. But there is obviously the, the counterbalance of that in terms of championship points. If it goes wrong and you don't finish the race, you don't get the championship points. So it's a calculated risk, but racing drivers are racing drivers. They want to win races. And I'm sure that if the opportunity arises, Matthew Pierce will try and find a way. At the moment, Sam Faulkner is doing a stellar job at the front of this field. He's just got the measure, hasn't he? He's just got that half a count that he needs. I think this is a great opportunity for Pierce in here. I think he's been so good under brakes into the dog leg. It, it's a high risk move. I absolutely appreciate that. 
but I would be very seriously contemplating it if he can get a good run now. What he'd need to do to be able to do that is he'd need to set it up. So he'd need to be exceptional through the loop, exceptional through top bend. He'd need to get a great run out of top bend and down that hill. He'd need to tuck right up behind as they go into the little kink into the dog leg and then he could make his move. So he's got to be good here. This is where he needs to be good. He needs to be quick through here. He needs to tuck up in behind. He's not close enough on this occasion. In fact, he's maybe lost a little cart length or so as they come down. He's got to be right under the bumper as they head into the dog leg here. He's not. He gets closer under brakes and then tends to lose a little bit of time. It's almost a carbon copy of the pre-final at the moment, isn't it? And that's why we were saying it's so important to get that track position. Third place, Dylan Reed. Fourth place, Tom Snape. Oliver Owen is in fifth place. And then Carl Watt is behind them. So not an awful lot of movement through the field at the moment. Still weighing each other up, it seems, currently. So up towards the elbow once more. The race leader is Sam Faulkner. Still Sam Faulkner. The man that has led pretty much every lap of every from every time the DRS 125s have been on this circuit this weekend. Remember, he, he does have tyres that are five or so laps fresher than Matthew Pierce's as well. He's just on the fastest lap of the race so far as well. Sam Faulkner, fastest lap a 42.973 contact for Cody Eustace and Jack Rigg. 314 and 316 in eighth and ninth places at the moment. The group are on the way up towards the elbow once more, the left-hander. And then through the right and onto the main straight to complete another lap. We've still got Nearly seven minutes of this race remaining. The gap between first and second, three tenths of a second. Just, just can't get there, Matthew Pierce. It will be very frustrating for him, I'm sure. Dylan Reed's just starting to come back to these two a little bit. And Tom Snape has just done the fastest lap of the race so far in fourth. Oliver Owen is in fifth, a 43-2 last time round for him. Then Carl Watt, Ben Gartside, Cody Eustace, Jack Rigg, in ninth, Elliot Stanley all the way back in tenth. Not a weekend to remember for the Hooton Park race winner. Into the right hander, then. Here are the front two. Is he closer this time? He's a little bit closer, isn't he? Matthew Pierce. This is where he needs to be quick out of this corner, down this back straight. Can he tuck up within a cart length and then just have a little bite? down the inside here. That was probably as close as he's been on the last lap. That's not close enough, but it's certainly as close as he's been. It's a good battle as well for 7th or 8th, 9th, 10th, 11th and 12th from Garside down to Dave Burns in 12th place. Over, start, finish are the leaders once more. Gap is 2 tenths. Fastest lap of the race so far. For Sam Faulkner, a 42.850. So although it looks like Pierce is well, as close as he has been for a lap or two, Faulkner is still showing that he has the pace to turn the screw if he needs to. He'll be he will be aware of the pressure. Drivers are very well aware of the noise that two carts make, the noise that three carts make. They'll use little reference points as they drive round. So. As he goes through the next corner, he'll have a little glance to his right. As he goes through the loop, which is where he's about to go now, Sam Faulkner, he'll be able to look through his right eye and just see how close, if he can usually see a bumper or a wheel or something behind him. They'll make little reference points throughout this race. Drivers they will know exactly what's going on around them, exactly how close or far away other drivers are.
at the moment. Sam Faulkner has just got the measure of him, just got the measure of Matthew Pierce in the key areas of the circuit, just keeping him at arm's length. It's a boxing match, isn't it? Keeping him at arm's length, stopping him from reaching in with the jab. And it is under extreme pressure here. He's been under pressure, Faulkner, for all eight minutes of this race. Just look at Dylan Reed as well. Reed's just done the fastest lap of the race so far, 42.847. In third place, just edging back towards Matthew Pierce. The issue here is they are so evenly matched, these drivers, that ultimately nobody's able to, to do something that is two tenths, three tenths quicker than the other driver without a mistake happening. So this is top end stuff, guys, that you're watching. This is the absolute top end of drivers getting the maximum out of their machinery. These are top drivers. Faulkner, Pierce, Reed, Snape, Watt, Kelly at Stanley up to six as well. What a good recovery from him. I was saying it was a weekend to forget. He's managed to get himself four or five places in the last few laps and has recovered to a very respectable sixth place indeed. Here are the leaders then. He's close this time, isn't he, Pierce? Just keep an eye on how much he loses, though, as he goes out of the dog leg, down the back straight and into middle bend. And then he spends the rest of the lap trying to reclose the gap again. He's going to need a mistake, I think. I think he's going to need Mark, uh, Sam Faulkner to make some sort of error here. Or he needs to be very, very, very brave indeed into one of the slower corners. It's a tough ask, a real tough ask for Matthew Pierce. But he's keeping Sam Faulkner honest at the moment. As Faulkner drops down towards the dog leg once more, the 283. It's the number two of Matthew Pierce behind him. Behind them is Dylan Reed. Into the right hander. And over start finish to complete one more lap. We've done 14 laps so far. We've got two minutes. It's going to be a six, probably a 16, 17, maybe even 18 lap race for these DRS 125 drivers. Down the back straight, they go once more. So what have we got then? As into the elbow go the front two. Both cut the curb on the inside, didn't they? Both caught that inside wheel, Faulkner and Pierce. And it happens so often. The driver in front does something and you automatically react and you end up doing it yourself. Just keep an eye on Dylan Reed here. I think Dylan Reed is as close as he's been for, well, for the duration of this race. We're into the final stages. There's probably only three to go. But Dylan Reed is edging closer. Good drive from him. A really progressive drive from Dylan Reed. But closer and closer and closer, hasn't he, to the front two. For the moment, Faulkner and Pierce. Or Pierce, uh, sorry, Faul yeah, Faulkner and Pierce at the front of the field. Faulkner, who hasn't put a foot wrong so far. And if he can do another, now let's see, another three laps. Another two laps, probably. He has a chance. Now, one of the chances for Matthew Pierce might be if Sam Faulkner gets defensive, he doesn't need to. He's not close enough, Pierce, at the moment to make a dive down the inside, but we've seen it so often where the driver in the lead thinks they're closer than they actually are, starts to go defensive, therefore slows himself down and does allow the driver in behind to get right under the coattails of them and put them under attack at the moment. Sam Faulkner doesn't have to do that. He doesn't have to do that at all in this final lap. He's going to come round. The elbow, have we got any last lap drama here? Has Matthew Pierce got anything up his sleeve to find a way through and stop Sam Faulkner from making it a clean sweep here at round two at Risington? Oh, we were talking about how well Elliot Stanley had done. He's got a mechanical failure. So Elliot Stanley puts his hands on his head. He has retired from this final. He was in sixth place as well. He had the fastest lap of the race as well did Elliot Stanley, but he hasn't managed to finish. 
And back at the front, there is no change. And I cannot see this yellow flag now, so there's definitely going to be no change into the final corner. The yellow flag will be into the elbow. So it's going to be Sam Fault. They've got a little bit of relief when they've seen that yellow flag. Sam Fault there from lights to flag wins the DRS 125 Grand Final here at Risington. Round two of the Daniel Ricciardo series. He's won every heat. He was fastest in qualifying. He's done every heat, every pre-final. And now he has won the final. Matthew Pierce so close, yet couldn't quite get on terms with Sam Faulkner. Dylan Reed home in third. Impressive drive from him as well. Certainly had the pace in the closing stages. Tom Snape, a very, very tidy fourth place considering where he was after qualifying this morning. Cal Watt, an excellent fifth. Cod Eustace in sixth. Jack Rigg, seventh. Oliver Owen in eighth. And Tommy Welsh, the rookie in ninth place. Elliot Stanley didn't finish. He was the fastest lap of the race holder, a 42.684. But ultimately, it is Sam Faulkner who will take maximum points from this weekend at Risington on his way to Clay Pigeon. And we are left with just one final race to go. The grand final for the DRS 100, scheduled off for exactly half past four, and we'll be with you shortly. And welcome to the Pro trophy presentation for round two of the Daniel Ricciardo series here at Little Risington. We'll start with our DRS 62 class and we'll start with our top rookie driver. Our top rookie driver finished overall in fourth place and it was the 120 of Oscar Walsh. So our top three then, and in third place was number six, Harry Bartle. <laughs> Second place for number four, Jack Robinson. And today's winner picked his spot with around about two laps to go and never looked back. Today's winner, the 1 2 1 of Connor Scarisbrick. <laughs> Ladies and gents, your DRS 62, top three. So from the youngest to the oldest, it's our DRS125. Straight into the top three with third place, the number 317, Dylan Reed. In second place, the number two of Matthew Pierce. And a clean sweep it was for the number 283. Your winner today for DRS 125, Sam Faulkner.
into the top three in third place. Dickie Spurs is still the widest car, the widest DRS car in Little Lizington this weekend. The one three eight of Henry Fox.